Howdy everyone, welcome, 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 I am the Shadow of the Hawk, and today I'm going to be reviewing... What the... This, the I spent like five minutes making sure that that little bit wasn't going to stick up. <laughs> Howdy everyone, I'm the Shadow of the Hawk, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, by Amazon. And for those of you who know me, and were coming here expecting me to rip this show apart, tear a new one... You might be leaving after putting a dislike, because I didn't hate it. I didn't enjoy it. Well, okay. That's all. Am I going to continue watching the show? If people push me to review the rest of the episodes, I might. If I've got nothing else to watch, I might. Did I absolutely hate it? Is it the worst thing I've ever seen? No. I have seen at least the first episode. I have seen worse. I have seen much, much, much worse than episode one of the rings of power so in case it isn't clear i've only seen the first episode so don't expect um don't like if you want me to like rip out season episode if it gets really bad in episodes two three four etc i have not seen those so i can't really comment on those but episode one i if i'm coming from it as a show standing on its own laurels i would have given it like a five or a six um there was some stuff i really enjoyed i'll get into in that in a sec um there was a lot i disliked which I will also get into. Um, from the perspective of it's actually Lord of the Rings, a two or a three. Like, it's, it is not Lord of the Rings. And, and I can justify that. First, I need to introduce someone else. Everyone who's watching, say hello to Tartarus. Hello, family! So, Tartarus, he's my boy. He's, uh, he's a tier in a car effects, if you couldn't tell. Uh, yeah, he, he, he sat through this bullshit with me. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he did not have a good time. He, he's gonna be the one tearing this show a fucking new one. I'm gonna be playing devil's advocate. Um, so, to start with... To start with what I enjoyed. I liked the Harfoots. They were interesting. They were all written. I liked Elrond's dialogue. Elrond's dialogue, him and Galadriel talking, if it wasn't for the fact that they acknowledge... That this, okay... <laughs> I said I was going to talk about good things. I'm going to stick to the good things. Elrond. Him, Galadriel, I liked their interactions. It was good. It was solid. It was very Thronesy, Game of Thronesy. That might be a negative. I'll go into that in a minute. Um, I, I, Again, I did enjoy the Harfoots. Their interactions, their little bit of like passive world building with all the wagons and stuff. And the message and like the the the, the dwarves have their woods. The, the elves have their forest. The, the, the dwarves have their woods. The dwarves have their mountains. The elves have their forests. The humans have their fields. Even the trees have their soil. We Harfoots, we just travel around. We don't care. That I, that was poetic. I liked that. That was that was a good line. Speaking of poetic, Galadriel and her brother's Decker. As someone with a younger brother, uh, she's got an older brother. I got a younger brother. As someone with a younger brother, if if he had been killed by some sob. I would definitely be in the same situation as Galadriel. I would definitely be... Whatever weapon was my brother's favorite thing, I would be definitely using that and acting vengeance on every fucker I can. There's my one F word of the video. I've got something to say Man. to stop you happen. Okay, what? I don't care what you say about Galadriel being really awesome, really badass, really, really fucking cool. That ain't fucking Galadriel. I didn't say she ain't a warrior. And even if she was... She's too fucking OP. Even Legolas was scared of a cave troll, and this snow troll, she freaking wrecks it like it's nothing. Okay. Okay, Tartarus, I agree with you. He, he touches on this, and like I said, I agree. Um, Gal Galadriel, she is... If you heard that, uh, I've got neighbors. They probably fucking hate me. That's my second effort. I can't say anymore. Uh, my neighbors, they probably hate me because I do a lot of voices for D&D &D and stuff. But um, anyway, uh, Galadriel. I'll shift over to the negatives a little bit. Um, I do not like Galadriel. I do not like how they're handling the character. Again, I have not read The Silmarillion. I've only seen her in The Hobbit trilogy. And again, she's a very limited player there. Or, uh, sorry, not The Hobbit. I saw her in The Hobbit trilogy and The Lord of the Rings trilogy. I was an idiot. I should have phrased that better. Um, and in that, like, she is definitely very powerful, controlling, very demeanored. And you can just tell that. Like, she, she is, she commands respect and power. And she is probably one of the most dangerous people in the Lord of the Rings mythos at the time. 
based on how she reacts to seeing the one ring. This Galadriel is not that. This Galadriel is younger, more brash, more courageous. She, she's, she's, she's a strong, independent woman. She, 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 she's going to fight the good fight. She's avenging her brother. She's leading people to their deaths because she's a stubborn bitch. What? That, that, is, that is the vibe I get from this character. Now, some people might immediately go, Oh, but if, but if it was a man, if it, if it was a man, if it was a man plus telling them move on, you're just being a bitch. No, that is what we call a fucking asshole. Okay, like a, oh, hold on. I got two books, this, this is not scripted. This is, I got two books here. Court of the Blind King, Berserk. This one more than this one. You've got the main character going off, doing his own thing. I, I'm sorry that I keep messing with my hair, it's just bothering me. Um, you got two main characters who both go off, do their own thing, and put the people under their command at jeopardy. Uh, in this, he understands it's a bad trait, and he just can't control himself because of how fucked in the head he is. In this, it's because Lurin, spoilers, is a spoiled little fuck who doesn't even learn the consequences by the end of the book. Again, spoilers. Uh, both of these, really recommend them. Anyway, point is, those are negative traits. Those are clearly negative traits. And yet, the show, Lord of the Rings of Power, is framing it, at least in the first episode, is framing it like it's her being powerful. It's her being... Uh, willing to push and push and push against the darkness. And combined with, like, she does everything. She She's paving the way. She's finding the fortress. Um, she finds the doorway. She finds the mark of Sauron. She goes and she solos the cave troll. Like, that, when I was watching that, I was thinking Stargate SG-1, where you have the team. Uh, you got... Um, Jack O'Neill, two else, is the guy, like, he's breaching clear and making sure everything is safe. He's communicating with people. He's got that natural charisma. He's people savvy. You got Daniel Jackson is the one translating things, identifying the histories, doing all that doing all that stuff that needs to be done, communicating if communicating is needed. Samantha Carter is the one who is figuring out all the science shit. There's an S word. I can't. I gotta stop cursing. YouTube doesn't like it. Uh, but she's figuring out all the sciencey stuff. And then you got Teal is the muscle as well as the Jaffa and occasionally the exposition machine. Like, you've got that solid four-man team who does everything. They manage to work together. And if they run into a problem where they can't solve it, stop doing that. Now, if they run into a problem where they can't solve it, they get an outside viewer to come in. Well, not outside viewer, but they get another person to come in as a fifth wheel or a sixth wheel. Or they even get a seventh wheel sometimes. Um, that, like, core dynamic of you've got the squad. Each person is able to do their role. It creates... It's more interesting because... In this, it's, oh, Gal Galadriel, she's leading the way, she's, 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 she finds the thing, she finds the thing, she solo kills the thing. It's, it's not, it's not interesting. And the best way I could describe it is, it, it, it feels video gaming to me. <laughs> like, she finds the door, stop, stop it, bad, bad, Don't, no more touch, touch, bad. Um, when she's, when she finds the door. I was like, oh, she found a video game waypoint. Because that's what it felt like. It didn't feel real. It didn't feel like she had identified like something weird. About it. it just like she walked up to it, punched it, punched it, punched it, doorway. It, again, it, it, felt like a it, it felt like a tutorial mission in a video game being played by someone who's played the game before on the easiest, and now they're going back to the easiest setting. Because again, like I loved the cave troll fight. And the way she finished it with her brother's dagger was awesome. Like, genuinely, like if, uh, like if I look at my notes here, um, that's, that's for film class. Wrong notes. Uh, do, 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 do. where did I, there they are. Like, one of, on my notes, let me move this out of the way. Uh, on my notes, I even, like, described that. I described how much I liked that. It was really, really, really freaking cool. Really freaking cool. Um, and with that, let's segue back into some of the things I liked. Um, okay. I'm a, I, I'm a sucker for canine companions, all right? So, even if it's just the silhouette of one, I typed out, WORKS! With extra exclamation points, because you need those extra exclamation points. Um, okay, the way things look, I love it. The snow troll... What did I say? Stop! The snow troll looked awesome. Um, I've seen some... I've seen a video of what a work 
looks like in episode three. I'm not psyched. I hope that's just a really, really fucked one. Um, but one of the things I've always loved about Lord of the Rings is how the villains look badass. They are just awesome. And works. They're, just, they're, 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 they're good boys. They're, they're gooder boys, you know? <laughs> All right. Let me see what else. Uh, okay, this is a, a thing I can credit most modern fantasy science fiction. A lot of that stuff, too, is it looks gorgeous. It looks good. I like the set design. I like a lot of the... I haven't seen a costume I don't like yet. I've seen a lot... Uh, the one critique I would give is... Um, uh, it looks like when she's up in the uh, frosty area, it looks like she's got chainmail on her head. Um, that's not going to be comfortable. Like, if you've ever been in, like, really, really cold weather and you pushed metal up against your skin, it's not... It, it's not... It's not fun. It's, it's not a good experience. Um, and if you have, like, chain mail touching your bare skin, your bare face, it's going to be an even worse experience. So I saw that and I'm like, eh. But, um, the, uh, the watch, the Eastern watch that, uh, what was his name? Uh, that, uh, Arondir and Medor, that they're a part of. What the fuck did I just do? Uh, um, that they're a part of. I like the chess piece. I don't know if it's For Honor and my love of the Punisher um, doing this, but I just, I like the face in the center. It, j it just, it's something that you wouldn't see in utilitarian armor. Uh, it, the vibe, I, I don't know if they're going to explain this, but what I think it is, is it's meant to be like, like, a, like it's meant to be a, um, like a mark, like a fear of death, like uh, the Aegis shield in Greek mythology where it's Medusa's head. That is pretty awesome. Um, it, that, or rather, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, what else? Is there anything else I liked? Uh, I mentioned Elrond. I, okay, kind of like a backhanded compliment thing is the dial Elrond's dialogue. I like his dialogue. It's good dialogue, but yes, it, it's too thronesy. It, it feels. Like Game of Thrones. And what did I say? Stop it! Bad! Um, it does feel too Game of Thronesy. And I don't like it's good. I enjoy it. It just feels out of place in a Lord of the Rings show. I can I can get into more details with that once I get into my bigger point. And is there anything else? Uh oh, freaking I, I there's only like two scenes with him. I don't care. Uh, I like Medhor, and I know they're gonna, Medor, Medor. I, I, I typed it down. It's M E D H O R Medhor, uh, Medor, something like that. I don't know. Uh, I like him. He's cool. What? Okay, my notes just keep closing themselves. <laughs> they, Microsoft knows. They're in the Matrix. They know what's going on. Um, on to the bad. Okay, Tar Tartaros. I can tell you're shaking with anticipation. Feel free to tell them what's wrong. What's wrong? I can tell you what's wrong. We say I'm talking in English, and then we say I'm switched to Elvish and back to English. That, that's like that's like having a German start talking in German and switch back to English. Pick a lane. Or you have them talking in Elvish, we have them talking in English, we make a distinction depending on who they're around. But don't do both. Okay, yeah, I, I agree with Tartarus. That is one of those things where I was looking at that and I'm like, Okay, that's. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure English in Lord of the Rings is called Western or Westeron or something along those lines, and it's just like Elrond greets her in Elvish, she greets back in Elvish, and then they switch to English. That would be like me. That would be like me being English. That would be like me being an American, me speaking English, greeting another American in English, and then we switch to Chinese. We switch to Mandarin. Uh, which would be really, really, really bad. Uh, Woyo Buhao Zhongwen. I'm pretty sure I messed up a word somewhere there. Uh, the point is, it, it just doesn't make sense. It, it, it doesn't fit within the world, doesn't fit in with the mise en scene. Now, if they, I understand it, getting the actors to speak in a fake language, in a fake foreign language is going to be hard. What they could have done, what I would have done personally, is you have them speaking in English when it's scenes with only elves. And then in other scenes, where they are speaking with humans, have them switch to... El if it's from the perspective of the humans, have them speak in Elvish. 
or don't have the main character be elvish. That really is another thing I would like to point out, is a lot of my... Uh, I do not like the elves, because they don't feel like Lord of the Rings elves. The, hell, even when... um. Now you're doing it. Now, why? What is wrong with you two? Um, I get Dragon Age vibes with these elves. They don't feel like Lord of the Rings elves. They don't have that ethereal, we are perfect and we are better than you. Because they, they objectively are. Like, hand to God, human supremacist here. Go talk to my buddy Kamazo. He knows better than anyone. Human supremacist. Day till I die. Humanity here. Orcs here. Along with Krogan and Klingons and Jump. Okay, there's a lot of things that are kind of close to humans, but everything else is down here in my view. You can't even see it on the camera. Right? Like, that is that is my view. And objectively, Tolkien elves are better than humans. They are perfect in every way. And you don't feel that here. They just feel like humans in weird-looking ears. They, like, they don't have that sense to them that makes them feel ethereal, greater than humans. They're just pointy-eared humans. You could transplant this plot somewhat to humans. Again, you have to change up some of the stuff about Val coming from Valinor and things of that nature. But it could be easily done to make the story just feel less human. You know? Like, it's one of those issues I have when we're talking about... Uh, when people talk about science fiction or fantasy, a lot of races, a lot of in, a lot of alien races and monstrous races, they all end up feeling human at times. Like D and D right now, like they took the hobgoblins who are like these, in, like in in the old lore, were these epic badass warriors. Uh, they're going around burning shit down in the name of Maglubiet, and now it's just they're fey. They changed them from. God, they changed them from humanoids to fey, and I imagine I haven't looked into their lore, but given how the orcs went from genocidal elf haters to stern companions thanks to Grimush, I am less than going to like the lore that they have. Why did I switch to this voice? I have no clue. But anyway, um, yeah. Uh, what are the negatives? So there was the Westron thing. Oh, ah, uh, Ruin. That was not a pause for an edit or any... That was me genuinely holding in my actual feelings on room. So, uh, I had to triple check this to make sure that I wasn't making a mistake. But, so, you have that pan over where you go from Linden, uh, you pass over Eriador, you go over what will be Rohan or what is Rohan. It didn't label it as Rohan, but what will be Rohan. And then you go over Mordor and then you get to Rune, the lands of Rune. It's not labeled room, but you get to the lands of Rune. And it is, they're Saxon. Their, their culture is Saxon. They, they've even got the fucking little armband things. Like, they are Saxon. They they are heavily inspired by Britannia. Or, no, no, wouldn't that be Britannia? Point is, they are European, they are white, and that is wrong. Rune, they, they are these swarthy men. They This should be, this was the opportunity Rings of Power had to have Arabs, blacks, hell, even Asians. They could have had their diversity here. Because that is where you are. That is where they are. Like, that is... The, the Rings of Power, their main selling point was that this was going to be a very diverse show. That it was going to... That they needed... You had the opportunity to stick with Tolkien's lore, and you fucking butchered it. And not only that, you whitewashed a region. You, you, you didn't just you didn't just insert people where they didn't belong. You whitewashed a fucking region. Third F word. Sorry, Susan, but Okay. Get a little heated. I'm calm. I'm calm. Cut that out. Stop looking at me like that, you freaking world-ending little... Can't curse. Susan's going to be pissed anyway. But I hope I got my point across there. And there's a few other things, but I, I think you can get the point. Is There is some good. There is some good. But the fact that this is not a original fantasy, that this is Lord of the Rings, downplays that good 
significantly. And I can hear some people going, well, did you, you enjoyed it. You, you, you admitted there's elements you enjoy. Why, why does it matter that it's not Lord of the Rings? It's a new take on Lord of the Rings. It doesn't... Look. Let, let me take a step back and let me make a defense of the writers, the directors, the like all these people. They are not trying to ruin Lord of the Rings. They are not coming into this thinking, oh, look at this amazing book we found. Time to burn it and destroy it because, because we hate gamers and we hate nerds. They all need to die because we hate them. <laughs> no, they're going in with a genuine passion, a hope to tell a good story. No one goes into a project going, I want this to fail as horribly as possible. Okay, there are two men who went into that situation and it turned out being an amazing situation for them. Springtime for Hitler is one of my favorite musicals ever, and fuck anyone who says... I apologize, Susan, please don't pay my channel. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, but so no, I will defend them on that. And I will make this following very, 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 very controversial statement. Writers don't need to write for an audience. They can write for themselves. That said, if you want to be a successful writer, you need to write with an audience in mind. Right? Like, myself. I am writing a novel. Will it ever actually be published? I have no fucking clue. Yeah, no, I, ha I have a swearing problem. I'm aware. Um, will it ever be finished? I have absolutely no clue if it'll ever be finished. But what I can tell you right now is if it were to be exactly 100% the way I wanted to tell it, it wouldn't sell. Why? Because I am a niche market. I am, I am, an e I am edgy. I like violence, excessive amounts of violence, and I absolutely adore, I absolutely adore reading up on uh, the technical aspects of battles. Like uh, another book I have, like one, Starship Troopers. The actual battles in this book are very technical, methodical, logical. They aren't boom, 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 boom. They aren't a Michael Bay movie. They are like, like that scene from Sherlock where it's like, um... Oh, how does it go? It's like um, uh, weak shoulder, target the shoulder, dislocate jaw entirely, take out of the feel like that. It's very technical in how the fight goes down. That is the kind of violence. I, I, don't get me wrong. I do love a good heart pumping, adrenaline rush. Get get the get, get the weapons. We're just gonna we just gonna go to war. We gotta burn your shit down, and we're just gonna uh, like I like that. That is good. However. You get me a good technical breakdown of a battle. I will love that even more. And that is the kind of overall, like, massive war that I would write. No one would want to... Some people would want to read that. Not everyone. I wouldn't be able to make money on a book like that. I would actively lose money on a book like that. So I need to make a compromise. Um, I can't have as much dark shit as I want in, that, in it because people won't read it. You need to make accommodations for audiences. And one of the accommodations you need to make when you are adapting a source material is accept the fact that you do not have complete and absolute freedom to tell your own story. When you take something like Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Star Wars, The Witcher, any of that stuff, you have also taken up a responsibility to tell a story that exists already for a fan base and a community that exists already. Are there exceptions? Yes, the How to Train Your Dragon movies and the How to Train Your Dragon books cannot be further from each other. But both of them are equally beloved for completely different reasons. And you can understand some of the differences that need to be made, some of the distinctions, some of the issues. There are times for it, and that does not excuse the bad times. However, just because there are exceptions does not mean there are rules. To conclude, The Rings of Power as a show, it is not horrible. Standing on its own, it would be it would be fine. It would just be an overpriced piece of fantasy that just got thrown to the ground going off the first episode. Again, I have not seen the whole thing. But as something that is standing on the shoulder of a giant, not just Amazon, but also Lord of the Rings, the world that Tolkien has made, it is an abject failure as an adaptation and that is why i refuse to watch any more episodes unless this video does amazing and i get a ton of views in which case uh, i will sell my soul for some sweet 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 internet validation 
Anyway, boys, girls, Austrians, and Texans, hope you all enjoyed. Um, add a comment down below, or if you feel too shy, um, if you already know me, send a message to me on Discord. I would love to have a conversation about this film, or not film, about this show. And yeah, thanks for watching. If you watched all the way here, have a good day. Bye.